Street photography can be hard. You might not know where to start with so much going on around you. And you might be afraid of what people are thinking of you. It can be tempting to give up, pack your camera away, and go home. I've done the same many times before, but there's something about this genre that just keeps me coming back. Over time, I've learned many things that have helped me along the way. Now I want to start off by saying that these tips are by no means ranked in order of importance. Some of them are more for beginners and some of them are for the more experienced shooter that just needs to freshen up on their skills. So the first tip is to travel as light as possible. When it comes to street photography, I strongly believe that less is more. That's why I always carry just one camera with me and one lens. When you choose a lens, I'd opt for a prime lens. It's been stated over and over again that prime lenses will get you to be more creative and think about your composition and not be a sitting duck where you could just zoom in and out. When you have less gear to think about, you can put all of your focus on just taking good photographs. You know, you, have, you don't have the distraction of thinking about what gear you should be using. Also, if you have the chance, I'd recommend that you pick a camera that is small and compact, say like the X100F. This is a great camera to shoot with for street photography because it's not very intimidating. If you shoot with a large DSLR with a long lens, it's not to say that you can't shoot with that, but you know, it's nicer to shoot with a camera that you're not seen by your subject before you even raise the camera up to your eye. With this camera at this size, you can really be more confident in the photos that you take you'll find yourself taking photos that you know you probably wouldn't if your camera was a lot more noticeable. So if you have the option to, I'd opt for shooting with a smaller camera. As a street photographer, you're bound to be asked about what you're doing. So it's important to be prepared for when that happens. I always carry one of these small portfolio books of my work with me every time I go out and take photos. I got these small flip books from Presto Photo. I can put the link in the description for you guys. I like having something tangible like this to show people instead of like showing an Instagram feed or a website just because, I don't know, there's something different about this and it's more believable and more interesting, I think. You know, people often ask, what is the best camera for street photography? There's a lot of things that you can recommend and you know, honestly, it's the camera that you know best. I recommended to shoot with a smaller compact camera, but if you don't have a smaller compact camera or you have a DSLR that you know the ins and outs of, shoot with that camera. You wanna shoot with a camera that you don't have to think too much about. Like I said, like the main focus here with street photography is being able to put all your attention on what's going on around you so you don't miss photos when they pop up. You know, you want to be able to take the photo confident that you know that photo is going to come out the way you want it to. That's why I always recommend to shoot manual, first of all, because you have full control over what the camera is going to produce. If you're confident about how your camera works, you'll be taking better photos without hesitation. Street photography can be pretty overwhelming especially to the newcomer. If I'm feeling uninspired or just don't know where to begin, one of the first things I always do is just to go wherever the light is. And usually where harsh light and harsh shadow meet, there will be a lot of negative space that you can work with and make some pretty compelling compositions. This is a style that you'll see in a lot of street photography work. It's just an easy way to get your creative juices flowing. You know, street photography, you really need to get into a rhythm. You need to warm up your, your eyes and how you see the world around you. And shooting in these kind of situations really helps you get started. Here are a few sample photos. A lot of times you'll probably see a potential photo happening in front of you, but you don't take the photo. You know, you might think to yourself, that's not really a good photo, and you just keep moving. Instead of thinking that way, block out those thoughts. Get into a zone and just take the photo. There's a reason why you saw something and that thought crossed your mind. There's photos that I've taken and have gone back to like weeks, months, even years later 
and not realize how great a photo it was. That's another reason why I recommend that if you're shooting digital to not delete your photos. You'll probably see something in the streets that you didn't really fully see it in the moment when you took it, but once you go back and look at it, you'll probably see the reason why you saw something there. This photo, for example, I took this photo in New York a couple of years ago. I went back and looked at these photos. I probably saw the, the negative space in these two people, you know, kind of framed in their boxes. But what I didn't really notice until later was that there's these train, I don't know what you would call them, wires, and they're basically connecting them together. And then if you look closely, way in the middle, there's like some kind of street art on the wall and it's these two people. And I didn't even notice that at the time. You know, it was so small that I was more focused on the two people that I was trying to frame. You know, so don't second guess yourself, especially if you're shooting digital. Just take the photo and ask questions later. Some call this the fishing technique and I think it's one of the best ways to frame and compose your shots in street photography. It's something I use all of the time. I think this technique is great for those who are a little nervous and don't want to get into the faces of people. And you just wait for your subject to fall in place. If you combine this with the earlier tip of going where the harsh light is, you can really make some awesome photos uh, working with shadow, light, and the environment. Here's some more photos where I use the fishing technique. If you try to hide the fact that you're taking a photo of someone and then they notice you, you risk putting yourself in a worse situation than before because no one knows what you're doing. Imagine you're going about your day and someone takes a photo of you and conceals their camera you know, behind their jacket or something. Your first impressions of that person are probably going to be are going to be pretty negative and if they stop you and ask you and you try to explain to them what you were doing, they're going to be less likely to believe in you. They don't know that you're a photographer. Just prepare yourself to be able to explain that to people. And don't be afraid if they ask you. I know a lot of people would prefer that people don't notice you so you can just move along your day and not have to confront anyone because who wants to do that? I don't want to either. But there's some sneaky ways you can get around it. One is to take a photo of someone, not hide the camera, but just let the person keep moving past you and keep the camera up to your face to make it kind of look like you weren't taking a photo of them, you are taking a photo of something you know, behind them maybe. Um, that's something I do a lot <laughs> as well. When I think of a great street photograph, I think of a photo that can't be dated, timeless photograph. Be wary of what's around your subject. Most of this will probably happen in the post-processing. So you wanna be wary of like things that could date your photos, like you know, advertisements, business fronts, cell phones or cars. Don't be afraid to crop your images. Probably most of my photos that I've ever taken that I post on my website or online have been heavily cropped. When you're cropping, think about what's most important in your photo and crop out anything that's unnecessary or distracting. So don't be afraid to do that. And also don't be afraid to make your photos in black and white. Making a street photograph black and white just adds so much to the timeless factor. Don't create for Instagram likes. Remember why you started street photography to begin with. I don't think street photography is ever gonna be the trending or popular genre of photography on Instagram or any social media. You know, I think a big reason for that is that street photography requires you to look at a photograph for more than one second. It's easy to get caught up in the number of likes or impressions that a photograph might make on social media. But just remember that those aren't real measurements of what makes a good photograph a good photograph. In the end, just create for yourself. Don't create for others. Street photography can be pretty daunting, I know. You know, just remember that it's okay to come away with photos that aren't that good. It always happens, it happens to me every time. Just don't let that stop you from going back out again to take more photos. And like all things, it takes experience to improve your skills. So whenever you have the opportunity, bring a camera with you so you're always practicing this skill. If you feel like you've learned something in this video 
and want to get involved with this channel that I'm building. Uh, subscribe for more videos, grab your camera, and start taking photos. Okay, that's it for now. I'll see you guys in the next one.